Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day today. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. Uh, Bitcoin and crypto, we're looking at the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency wealth transfer. Now in part one and part two, we looked at the wealth transfer from the rich, from the wealthy, the, the one percenters and the five percenters of the world, those that have accumulated the greatest amount of wealth, if they're buying cryptocurrency, how does that affect the price of Bitcoin? Well, today we're going to look at the 95 percenter. What's happening with the retail investor as they purchase Bitcoin? And what is going to happen? What, what would it take or how can they affect the price of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency as they're engaged in a wealth transfer of their wealth into cryptocurrency. So let's get right into it. Now, should I buy Bitcoin or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash the like button. Hey, it really helps us out. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. And I want to repeat that. I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss. Read the rest of this disclaimer if you intend to invest in Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency, <coughs> excuse me, cryptocurrency for that matter. In fact, this disclaimer is good advice regardless of what you're investing in. Because when you're making an investment, you need to understand there is always a risk of loss. No investment is perfect and there's never been an investment that was paying money 100% of the time. We want to find investments that actually increase our wealth and doesn't take away from our lifestyle. And so that's what this, this advice is all about, is how do, you, how do you manage that risk so that you Take advantage of the opportunity, but don't squander the risk that you're getting involved with in a way that it actually damages you financially. So let's look at uh, the history of Bitcoin. And, I, and, and if you've seen me talk about this before, don't just tune it out. Think about it. Take, it, uh, take a little bit of a deeper dive into it because the information on this little chart is vastly important in coming up with a strategy that helps you take profits and avoid losses with Bitcoin and any other cryptocurrency. Now, if you took $1,000, bought Bitcoin, and held it for three years and then sold it, what would happen? And this goes throughout the history of Bitcoin starting with December 31st from January 1, 2017 to December 31st, 2019, all the way back to the beginning of Bitcoin. Now we did only go to January 1, 2011. We could go back a little bit further, but <clears throat> January 1, 2011 is about when there were beginning to see uh, different exchanges and it became a little bit easier for people to actually purchase Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And as you can see here, just in the last three years between January 1, 2017 and December 31st, 2019, if you had bought $1,000 worth of Bitcoin and sold it three years later, you would have got seven times your money. Now, there's not very many things where you could make an investment of $1,000 and turn it into seven grand, but this is one of those. In fact, that's extremely, extremely rare. I mean, when people talk about the stock market, mutual funds, and all of these other things that people invest in, getting a seven-fold increase in a three-year period is literally unheard of. Um, but throughout the history of Bitcoin, it has done that and even better. Its worst year still turned an 18% profit in a three-year period. And 18%, when you compare it to getting a bank savings account, is actually still spectacular. Even when you compare 18% over three years to the stock market, to the S&P 500, that is close to being competitive most years. All right, so 
Let's look at the global distribution of wealth. This was based, this was, uh, 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 comes from data from 2017, but it is still relevant today. Most of these figures haven't changed a lot. Uh, the top 1% own about 50% of all the wealth in the world. In fact, the top 5% own about 75% of all the wealth in the world. But today, uh, in part one and part two, we talked a lot about this 75%. In today's video, we're actually going to talk about just this 25% area. I'm sorry, 25% of the wealth, but it actually represents 95% of the population. This part of the pie represents retail investors. And in other words, we're talking about investors who are not in the wealthy class. People who are investing maybe $50, $500, $1,000 dollars into Bitcoin cryptocurrency. Um, and, and for some of us, $1,000 is a dramatic amount of money. Um, and so what is it about this, this 95% or this particular piece of the pie? Now this pie, the total circle here, the total amount of global wealth is valued at about $360 trillion globally. And so this part of the pie actually represents about $90 trillion. Now, how much of this $90 trillion has to move into Bitcoin for it to have a dramatic effect on cryptocurrency? Let's take a look. So right now, Bitcoin is in the ballpark. This, this was when Bitcoin was selling at $9,578 and the market cap of Bitcoin was $176 billion. So that's basically taking the $9,000 and multiplying it by the actual supply of Bitcoin and that's how we come to this $176 billion number. Now, $176 billion compared to the $90 trillion contained by this uh, you know, uh, piece of the pie is, is actually less than 1%. It's more, more like 0.2% of this total amount of wealth. And so if 1% moves from this group here into cryptocurrency, we're only talking 1%. That would be a trillion dollars. And that would, that would move the market cap from this 176 billion all the way up to 1 trillion. Oh wait, no, that's not correct. It would actually move it farther because on a daily basis, only about four to 6% of the total supply of Bitcoin is actually ever traded. Now, if you look throughout uh, uh, Bitcoin's daily history or, or other histories, you'll find that on some days, on some occasions, it may trade closer to 10% or 15%. A few times it gets over 20% of the total supply of Bitcoin actually being traded. And so the process of moving this uh, 1% of this uh, wealth from the retail investors into Bitcoin, that 1% is only able to do it by buying this small portion that's actually available on the open market. The rest of the supply of Bitcoin, the other 95% uh, of the crypto of Bitcoin cryptocurrencies were not for sale. And so you couldn't buy them even if you wanted to. And so as the money flows from this group, from the retail investors into Bitcoin, that $1 trillion or that 1% is going to have a much larger impact. Um, now, it's hard to say how that'll happen because it happens on a daily basis, a little bit at a time. Uh, every day, a little bit more uh, retail investors actually buy and own Bitcoin. So let's take a look at how they're purchasing it and what's happening that's moving more of that retail dollar, retail investments over into Bitcoin and altcoins. The first area where a lot of people get exposure to Bitcoin is through exchanges like Binance Hoboy and Coinbase. Now, these exchanges, that's how I first got my exposure into Bitcoin was by buying it through different exchanges. I, I bought Bitcoin through a number of different exchanges. 
And for a lot of people, that's how they invested in Bitcoin. But in the future, a lot of people will be getting their Bitcoins through other ways. For example, there's a lot of apps and software out there where you can buy Bitcoin directly. You've got software wallets and hardware wallets where if you have that hardware wallet or that software wallet, you can actually buy Bitcoin directly and deposit it directly into those wallets. You know, for example, if you have a ledger or a treasure, you don't have to go through an exchange to buy Bitcoin. You can buy it directly through that hardware wallet. You also have things like the backed app. Now this it, the, backed, if you're familiar with them as a company, they're a institutional exchange. They were built to serve institutional customers and backed as a joint venture between the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange, Microsoft and Starbucks. But they're, they're also attempting to capture a part of the retail market by building the backed app. And so the backed app is going to be uh, quite unusual. It'll be an app that you'll install on an Android phone or onto an Apple phone. And you'll be able to manage uh, digital assets from different games, from cryptocurrency, from different rewards such as airline miles or if you work for a company that gives you different rewards uh, like points that you can spend on things. Those can be managed in the app as well as you can even manage cash. And so with this app, you can literally, you'll literally be able to go to Starbucks and buy your coffee using cryptocurrency or using points that you got from a game that you play or using your airline miles or other rewards points or even just cash that you've moved into that app. And so this is actually a really unusual thing the app itself is not available yet. Uh, the backed company has announced that it should be out uh, sometime this summer or anytime soon. So time will tell when they actually release it, but they've made, they've made a huge investment and done a lot of marketing already uh, about this app. And so it, it looks pretty secure that it actually will become a real deal uh, sometime in the near future. So this could be a significant game changer. I mean, when you think of all the Starbucks out there, um, plus, I mean, you, you normally you don't think of Microsoft as having a lot of outlets or having a lot of customers. I mean, sure, everybody owns, not everybody, but a huge number of people own a copy of Windows and Microsoft Office and all of those other apps. But Microsoft also has hundreds of thousands of customers that have built their websites on the Microsoft platform and Microsoft provides them the services for when people are buying things from those online stores. And so when you, when you go to a whole, I mean hundreds of thousands of different online stores are built on Microsoft's platform and when you're checking out, they're using the checkout process that Microsoft has built. So do you think that this app will be able to connect up to all of these Microsoft stores? I have a tendency to think so because if you don't have a lot of places where you can actually buy stuff with this app, the app becomes useless. Well, Microsoft, New York Stock Exchange and Starbucks have spent too much time and money building this app to let it fail. And so, yeah, I expect to see a lot of different places where you can use that app. Well, PayPal recently has been rumored PayPal itself has not yet confirmed it, but other companies and other, in, you know, other organizations and different people um, have given us a high degree of confidence that PayPal will be offering the ability to buy and purchase Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies directly through PayPal. And PayPal has over 300 million customers. And so that's going to make it very easy for retail customers uh, to move or retail investors to move money directly into Bitcoin. And the easier you make it for retail investors to get involved with Bitcoin, the more of them that will do it. Plus we have Facebook's Libra. Um, everybody who has a Facebook account in this, in sometime in the future will be able to, to buy and use Facebook's Libra cryptocurrency. 
And when that happens, that gives them an easy opening, an easy gateway to get involved with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And then the last one I'm going to talk about, but this is not the least, and this is not all, this is not intended to be an exhaustive list. There's thousands of other apps and software out there that are giving people exposure, making it easy for people to take their retail dollars and push them into Bitcoin. But Lolly is an app that you can sign up for. And every time you buy something online, uh, maybe you're buying a, a desk or furniture or a, a lamp or other items online and having it shipped to your house. If you're buying things online, maybe you're buying steak or chicken or uh, dinner, uh, you know, those prepackaged meals. If you do it through the Lolly app, a percentage of every purchase will be converted into Bitcoin and stored in your Bitcoin account, in your Bitcoin address. And so Lolly is making it really easy for people to accumulate Bitcoin just with their regular online purchases. And so all of these different apps, and there's hundreds and thousands of other apps out there that I haven't listed. I listed to uh, here. I listed the ones that I thought were the most useful and the most interesting, the ones that have caught my eye and caught my interest. But there's a lot of other apps out there. Another area that's making it going to make it easier for uh, this one percent of that ninety trillion dollars to move into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency are, is central bank digital currencies. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the Bank of England was the first central bank to seriously consider doing a cryptocurrency. But since then, China, Ukraine, Sweden, Uruguay have all gone into a pilot program where they're pilot testing their own cryptocurrencies, their own central bank digital currency. <clears throat> and so given that these are all in a pilot testing phase, for all these different countries, it won't be long before those countries actually release it. And when you're talking about a country the size of China, that gives us a huge amount of retail money that could flow directly into Bitcoin. And then lastly, we have a lot of brick and mortar companies that are getting involved in, in helping people purchase Bitcoin. The first area is globally, there's over 8,345 Bitcoin ATMs that are spread throughout the world. And then recently in the last few days, there were over 20,000 stores that have announced that you'll be able to buy Bitcoin right from the counter. And so when you go to a 7-Eleven or a CVS or a Rite Aid and you're standing there and you're buying gum or you're buying gas or you're buying a prescription, whatever it is you're purchasing, right there at the counter, you'll be able to buy Bitcoin as well and move money from your account into your Bitcoin address. And that's happening at 20,000 different brick and mortar locations. And then finally, MoneyGram. MoneyGram doesn't allow you to directly get involved in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, but it does behind the scenes because MoneyGram behind the scenes is using a cryptocurrency to move money in their back end that helps them with maintaining enough funds in all of these different banks all around the world in order to keep their business going because there's a certain amount of money that they have to have in different countries in order for them to function as a way of transferring money for their customers. And so different countries have different requirements, but behind the scenes, MoneyGram is using a cryptocurrency in order to move those funds around. And so as things move on, we're seeing more and more retail money actually getting pushed into Bitcoin and altcoins and other finances. And so this is beginning to gain more and more momentum. Now, right now on the chart in terms of the total number of adopters, the total number of people that will actually be using cryptocurrency once we kind of hit uh, you know, the mass adoption. Right now, we're way back here in the early adopter phase. We're far less than two and a half percent. Because when you look at the number of people that actually have smartphones throughout the world, there's five billion smartphones that are active and working throughout the world. And there's 
two billion people worldwide. And so a large portion of today's uh, population have access to smartphones, which gives them access to the ability to use cryptocurrency. And so we're way, way early. When we start hitting this part of the curve, when we start seeing uh, this accelerated version, we may see numbers that rival what we saw back here where $1,000 could become millions of dollars in a very, very short period of time. And so we're still very, very early in this phase. We're, we're, we're looking at only a handful of millions of Bitcoin addresses and cryptocurrency addresses, and that is beginning to accelerate over time. And so that's our video for today. How can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? please leave them in the comments below. We'd love to interact with you. Even if you disagree with anything that I said, please leave your polite disagreements in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And hey, do me a favor. Have a fantastic day.